Sometimes surgery on your thyroid is recommended. Important details about thyroid surgery and the steps involved in choosing a surgeon and deciding on which surgery may be right for you will be discussed here. In some cases, surgery is recommended because your thyroid is quite enlarged or dysfunctional. Surgery may also be recommended because of biopsy results that are clearly cancerous, malignant, or very suspicious. When surgery is recommended, you will need to meet with a thyroid surgeon. Most patients are anxious about meeting a surgeon, but being prepared and feeling in control will help you get the most out of your visit. Prepare yourself for your visit with the surgeon by gathering your questions. It is best to spend a little bit of time locating an experienced thyroid surgeon. Finding an experienced surgeon is critical, not only because thyroid surgery is quite delicate and intricate, but also because experienced surgeons will often work with a multidisciplinary team of thyroid specialists, such as endocrinologists, radiologists, and nuclear medicine doctors that will make your subsequent care easier. Make sure you are comfortable with the surgeon and that you trust their judgment and expertise. Remember that if you have thyroid cancer, you will likely have a five to 10 year ongoing relationship with this surgeon, so choose carefully. Discussing the pros and cons of the different surgical options is a key component of your visit. In addition, make sure to review the details of the surgery and go over any risks. Remember that the thyroid is made out of two lobes, the right lobe and the left lobe which are connected in the middle. Options for thyroid surgery usually include removal of half of the thyroid, hemithyroidectomy, or the entire thyroid, total thyroidectomy. This will be a personal decision for each patient, but generally your surgeon and endocrinologist will make their recommendations based on your test results. In general, a total thyroidectomy is performed in the hospital under a general anesthetic and takes approximately one and a half to three hours. During the surgery, a small incision is made and the thyroid is disconnected from its blood supply and then carefully removed from the windpipe. A total thyroidectomy is delicate because the neck is a tight area with many important structures passing through it. Here are some risks that your surgeon will review with you for sure. There is a small chance of bleeding with any surgery and the likelihood of bleeding for this particular operation is around one out of every 300 people. To help reduce the chances of bleeding, most surgeons recommend stopping medicines such as aspirin or ibuprofen. There is a small chance of permanent injury to the recurrent laryngeal nerve, which is the nerve that helps move the vocal cords. This nerve is quite small and unfortunately travels between the thyroid and the windpipe, right where your surgeon will be working. It can be stretched, bruised, or damaged during thyroid surgery. If the nerve does not work normally six months after the surgery is completed, then the damage is considered permanent, and the voice will be whispery and hoarse because the motion of one vocal cord is compromised. It is important to discuss this risk carefully with your surgeon, and while it is difficult to put a number on it, it appears that even in the most experienced hands, one to four percent of patients who have thyroid surgery can have permanent damage to this important nerve. Some patients notice minor changes in their voice after surgery. This is often due to damage to smaller nerves that control the highest pitches in the voice. This can happen to around 10 to 15 percent of patients. Approximately 2% of patients may have permanent dysfunction of all four parathyroid glands. The parathyroids are small organs that share a blood supply with the thyroid and are located behind the thyroid gland. The surgeon will try to leave all of the parathyroids behind, but sometimes they may be temporarily stunned or permanently damaged. If all four parathyroids become non-functional, the patient may need to take additional daily calcium forever. Recovery from thyroid surgery is usually quite straightforward. Most patients stay in the hospital at most one night, and there are usually no surgical drains to remove. Pain medications are usually only needed for a day or two. Taking one to two weeks off from super strenuous activity like working, driving, or running is generally recommended. Make sure you do not lay around a lot since you will experience more pain and swelling. Be active. After surgery, you will usually come back to see the surgeon in a few weeks and go over any pathology reports. The surgeon will go over all the available information and let you know what the recommended follow-up may be. Patients who have their entire thyroid removed will need to start taking daily thyroid hormone. The exact dosage will be calculated initially based on your weight, age, and size, and then adjusted according to very sensitive blood tests by your physicians. 
Many thyroid issues, including those for which surgery is recommended, will require careful follow-up, so make sure to understand the follow-up plan for your care. Remember that your surgeon and their team will be there for you in case you need advice or help in the future.